Okay, folks, welcome to the uh, a quick transcription and translation review screencast. We're going to go over this in class also, but I just thought it might help for some of you guys to hear it and see it done as an example. So we just, in class on Monday, just got to transcription, which is right here. Um, and we said that transcription is when we take a strand of DNA and we turn it into uh, RNA. Now the type of RNA that we use is called messenger RNA and it's called messenger RNA because like we said in class the DNA message is not, uh, it's unreadable by our bodies. They, our bodies can only understand the language that is in RNA. So what we want to do is we want to make sure we understand how DNA is converted into RNA. That message is then going to be sent to another part of the cell. Every cell of your body does this and it's going to be translated through the process of translation to a protein. Now these proteins then will go out into your body and do whatever specific task or job that they're supposed to do, whether it be hemoglobin or an enzyme or something like that. So very quickly, let's just, I'll just put a couple examples up here on the screen. Uh, to make to transcribe for transcription if we have a stretch of DNA remember now DNA is double stranded but in order to read it we have to open it up so we're gonna see one strand of the DNA and read that alright uh, and just I'll show you a picture in a second but just for happen's sake let's say we have uh, a strand that looks has this sequence A T T G G C C so this would be our single strand of DNA that we are reading and we are going to run through the process of transcription. Well, if this is our strand, we read it one letter at a time when we use our base rules, our base pairing rules. So A would match up with T, and T would match up with A. But this is the problem. Remember what we said. In RNA, there is no base T. All right, There is no thymine base in RNA. All right. In DNA there is, in RNA there is not. So this would be incorrect here. We would want that T to be gone. A would match up with the nitrogen base U. All right. Now this is kind of hard. Let's move this out of the way here. Uh, so our first A would match up with a U. Our second base T would match up with the letter A. Then we have another base T. So our next base would be A again and then G would match up with C, G would match up with C, C would match up with G, and C would match up with G. So according to our base pairing rules, A with U, G with C, and vice versa, this would be the strand of RNA that we would make from that original strand of DNA. So this is DNA, and this one down here is RNA and that is messenger RNA so let's see what it looks like in an illustration we'll go to the illustration in your book and as you can see up here this is a strand of DNA and so is this bottom the gray phosphate sugar backbone alright so what we do is we open it up just like a zipper in the middle this polymerase is an enzyme that reads along the DNA as it opens up, matching up the complementary bases. So as you can see, it's already been going here. This one looks like it was a C, so they added a G. This one was a G, so it added a C. This one was an A, so it added a U, because again, there is no T. So that is the basic idea of transcription. Transcription is the making of RNA from DNA. Now the next process is a little more complicated. We haven't gotten to this one yet. We'll be talking about it on Wednesday in class, but that is translation. So if we take this same stretch of mRNA, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to copy this and I'm going to go on to the next page just so we have a fresh slate here to work with. So if this is the mRNA strand that we are using, now what this mRNA strand will do is it will actually leave the nucleus of the cell, which is where uh, the DNA is and where the transcription happened, 
what it's going to do is it's going to send this out to the side of the cell nucleus into the um, ribosome, the cytoplasm area where the ribosomes are, and it's going to convert this into a protein. Now, what we have to do in order to complete this process, we have to take these letters and we have to read them three at a time. And what this is called is called a codon. All right? A codon is three bases in a row of RNA, messenger RNA specifically. All right? Okay, we had a little break in the action, but uh, if we're back to this, this is our mRNA strand that we had, UAACCGG. All right, now this is just a quick illustration. I have a, a larger one here in a second, but um, what what these things are again? These three letters in a row are called codons. So we have a codon here, and we have a codon here. All right, so we have two codons. Now, in reality, these would be much much larger, but just just to give us the basic idea of how to do this, we look at these three letters at a time. All right, so our first codon is UAA. Now, this particular wheel is a nice, uh, a nice way to find out what we do now. Now, we've talked in the past about uh, proteins. Proteins are made up of amino acids. All right. Every protein is made up of amino acids, one after the other after the other. What this wheel does is it lets us decide, based on the, the RNA that we have, the messenger RNA, what amino acids we're going to put down in what order for our protein. Now, if you change the order of an amino acid, you change the protein. And so every protein has to be made up of a certain order sequence of amino acids. All right? Now, in this particular case, we have something that's not going to be created right off the bat. But if you look at these, the first one we have is UAA. All right, so how this works is you start with this codon wheel in the middle. The biggest letters you are the ones you use first. So you go U is the first letter, and then the second um, letter in the codon is A. So you go out one circle to A. Then the third one, you move out to the outermost circle, and that is A. Now in this particular case, it says stop. So you wouldn't do any more work on this particular protein. You would just stop. So this sequence does not code for an amino acid, so therefore can't make a protein. Now, if we, if we change this up a little bit and we bring this particular sequence out, and we use this example instead. If our original DNA was TAC, CTT, and so on and so forth all the way down the line, what mRNA strand we would get would be this one right here. And notice I broke them into chunks of three. Again, those are called codons. So in this case, we're actually going to make something here. We're going to make a protein. The first three letters in this particular mRNA strand are A, U, and G. That is our first codon. Now, the codons, if we use the wheel, we go A is the first one, then we move out one to the second circle, and that's a U, and then the next letter is a G. Now if I go back to our other uh, wheel because it's a little bit bigger, we could go A, U, G, and that codes for the amino acid methionine. So that's the first amino acid in this particular protein, and in most cases that is exactly what it is. So the amino acid for this first codon is methionine, and we abbreviate that M-E-T for methionine. Now, for the next one, we will go G-A-A. So I'm going to go back to this big wheel here and look and see what that makes. G, and then A, and then A. So it would give us this one right here, which is glutamic acid. All right? G-A-A. -A. Now, we can go back, and we can write that down. G L U. Alright, and I'm going to put A because there's another uh, amino acid that's called glutamine that has the same first three letters. So, 
So we'll put GLUA so for glutamic acid. So that goes with the second codon. Now the third codon, CAC, that's going to give us CAC. It's going to give us this one right here, histidine. So I'm going to put HST. Space that out so we don't get confused. So that's our third one. Our fourth one is GUA. So we start with the big G and then the U and then the A. That gives us this one over here called valine. V-A-L. And then we go G U A for this next one. Last one we just did, sorry. We go C C C, which is proline. So we go P R O. And then finally we go U A G U A G. And oh, there's another one of our stops. So we stop. You don't have to write stop. You shouldn't write stop. You just quit and do what it says. So this particular protein that we made is a protein that is made up of methionine, glutamic acid, histidine, valine, and proline in that order. Now, we'll talk later about mutations. If we were to have an error on, say, one of these, if we changed it, it would change the whole resulting protein. But for now, that's where we're at. And that's the basic concept of translation. Now, we're going to talk more about how this looks. And it looks more complicated than the process we just went through. And this is the uh, example of how it happens. So if you can see down here, this is our mRNA strand. What it is fed through this ribosome three letters at a time and the amino acids are brought in. So this thing right here, this is called a tRNA molecule and the video that we're going to watch in class does a really nice job of, of illustrating this. So this will just be a quick little intro and then the video will really kind of hammer it home. But they come in one at a time. So this one has already been in and it has left an amino acid right here. The next tRNA comes in, and you can see that they match up. So here's our, our AUG, just like we had on the last one. Our AUG coded for methionine. So this first amino acid right here is going to be methionine. Then the next one is UUU. Well, UUU codes for UUU uh, phenylalanine. So this next one must be phenylalanine. Well, then the next one's going to come in ACG. Go back here. A, C, G, threonine. So, same story. And they'll just keep coming until they get to one of the stop codons. So that's the process of translation. I uh, went through it fairly quickly and we're going to go into more detail in class. But I just thought I might make this video so you guys, if you have time on your off day, you can check this out and, and take a look. So I hope it helps. Please send me any questions as you start looking at this.